Okay, so we're going to talk about one of the fundamental interactions you are going to have with the Ethereum blockchain, which is sending transactions between accounts. As always, I'm going to start by making a new directory called transactions, and then I'm going to CD into it. I'm going to split my panes for convenience, and then I'm going to create a new file called package.json. I'm going to include the Web3 library and the Ethereum JS util library that we've seen before, but I'm also going to introduce a new library called Ethereum JS TX. This is going to be a low level utility library for making and creating transactions. Now I'm going to npm install. And then I'm going to start my test RPC on the bottom pane here. And I'm going to connect to my node console on the top pane. Now I'm going to instantiate a new web three object. So var web three equals require web three. And then I'm going to instantiate it with web three equals new web three, new web three dot providers dot HTTP provider, HTTP local host 8545, which is the port that the test RPC is running on. And just to confirm that it works, if I do web three dot F dot accounts, I'm sorry, web three dot F dot accounts, it does work. Now, test RPC comes preceded with 10 separate Ethereum accounts for us to use. And these Ethereum accounts come preceded with 100 Ether each. Let's see how we could go ahead and confirm that. So in order to access the first account, we can do web3.f.accounts and then the index in the array, which in this case is zero. And then we can pass that into web3.f.getBalance, which will give us the balance in, of the account in way. And if we want to see it in Ether, we could do web 3 from way and then pass ether as the second argument and we could confirm and if we do dot two number we will confirm that this is in fact a hundred ether now this is going to get confusing for it's going to get verbose rather for us to write all this stuff out every time we want to query it in this tutorial so i'm going to make a couple helper methods to make our life easier first i'm going to make a variable called account one and i'm going to set that first account equal to that and i'm also going to make a variable called account two and I'm going to set the second account in this array equal to that. Next, I'm going to make a function called balance just to be able to quickly check the balance of each account. And this is going to be a function that takes an account as an argument. And it's going to return web3.f.getBalance. And it's going to then pass in the account. And then it's going to call to number on this. But I want to actually get this in ether. So I'm going to do web 3 from way comma ether dot two number and that looks good like it should work and just to confirm this we can do balance account one and we should get a hundred back so now i want to walk through a simple transaction just trying to send one ether from account one to account two and we can do this by doing web 3.f.send transaction and then from account one to account two and then we need to declare the value which is going to be the amount of ether that we want to send in way. So we're going to do web 32 way one comma ether. And then there's two other variables that we need to declare. First up is the gas limit, which is the amount of gas that we want to authenticate for this transaction. Because I know that sending a transaction costs exactly 21,000 gas, we can just hard code 21,000 right there. And then we need to set the gas price that we want to pay for this transaction as well. When you're just working locally in test RPC, whatever you set for the gas price doesn't actually matter. But when you're setting transactions on the mainnet, you have to set the gas price to at least the market value that the gas price that the miners have collectively agreed upon. If you set the gas price higher, it means that your transaction will be mined faster. Because right now the gas price is around 20 G way or 20 billion way, I'm just going to use that as a placeholder. So I'm going to set the gas price to 20123123123, which is 20 GWay. And then I'm going to hit enter and send this transaction. So we got a hash of a transaction that came back. And I'm just going to declare this a variable of TX hash, and we're going to use that in a sec. So let's see if this transaction actually went through. We should be able to check the balance of account two and see if it got its ether. And it did. It looks like it has exactly 101 ether. And we might expect balance of account one to return 99. But if we actually look, it returns something slightly less. In this case, 98.99958. This is because account one had to pay the gas cost of sending the transaction. And we should be able to reverse engineer this number by looking into the gas limit and the gas price. 
Remember, we paid 21,000 gas for the transaction, and the price per unit of gas was 20 billion way. So if we multiply that together, we get this 42 number. Now, if we um, take the balance of this account in way, so parse int web3 dot two way balance account one, and we add these two numbers together, so we'll see that we get exactly 99 ether. So the only thing that's the discrepancy here is the gas times the gas price. We can also use that TX hash string to get information about the transaction. So if I do web3.f.get transaction and then pass in the TX hash, we'll see that we get a JavaScript object with information about the transaction. So this is the TX hash. This nonce thing we'll come back to in a second. The block hash is the hash of the block that the transaction was mined in. The block number is the number of the block. In this case, it's one because this is a local blockchain instance starting from scratch. Who is from, who is to, the value in the transaction, the gas price we paid, and this is just any arbitrary input data that's given to the transaction as well. Now let's take a look at this nonce number in a little bit more depth. The nonce is a mechanism to make sure that you don't send duplicate transactions to the Ethereum blockchain. You can think of the nonce a little bit like an ID in a database. This is an auto-incrementing number that needs to be unique from an address. So one address can only send a transaction with the same nonce once. If I tried to send another transaction with nonce zero, it would be rejected. And we can actually try that because we can go back to the transaction that we sent before and try to manually set the nonce as zero. And we'll see that it says the TX doesn't have the correct nonce, account has a nonce of one, TX has a nonce of zero. That means that the next transaction that Ethereum is expecting from this address is expecting a nonce of one. And you can see that if we don't declare any nonce and hit this again, and we save var TX hash as this, and then do um, web three dot get transaction TX hash, we'll see that the nonce is in fact one. And if we wanted to set the nonce manually, we could just do the next nonce of two, and that transaction goes through. And if we wanted to just ad hoc, be able to determine what the next nonce is that we would need from an account, we can actually do web3.f.getTransactionCount, and then pass in account one. And we'll see that this has made three transactions in the past. So because the nonce starts at zero, we can effectively use this number as the next nonce to set. So if I wanted to then make another transaction, instead of using this, I could do web3.f.getTransactionCount and then pass in account one, and this transaction should be valid and goes through. And now if I call this again, it would be on four. Now, if I set the nonce to something that is in the future, like let's say 11, it will reject the transaction here and say this TX does not have the correct nonce, account has a nonce of four, TX has a nonce of 11. Now each individual Ethereum node or the software that runs each Ethereum node implements functionality like this in different ways. So the test RPC outright rejects the transaction if it doesn't have the current nonce. Something like geth might store the transaction for future use if it has a nonce in the future because it might realistically be a valid transaction and it just hasn't synced the transactions in the middle. But every transaction that actually gets put on the blockchain has to have the proper sequential nonce. Now there's one other thing that I want to draw attention to. Whenever we've been calling any function in our node console, even something like balance account one, we can see that there's a message getting logged in the test RPC log. And for example, if we did a send transaction, we could actually see that f underscore send transaction and then some metadata about the transaction is logged. Well, these methods right here, this f underscore get balance, these are the actual RPC methods from the Ethereum protocol. The Web3 JavaScript library defines an interface into those methods that is a couple layers of abstraction above the actual underlying protocol methods. Now, this is helpful because it gives us a lot of convenience, but it also does a little bit of magic underneath the hood that we might want to get rid of if we want lower level customization. For example, when we're calling send transaction, this already knows how to interop with our private keys that are created when test RPC is created, but we don't need to actually sign any data manually. But maybe we might want to do that. For example, if we wanted to send a transaction offline, we might want to just sign this data with our private key and then transfer that to an online computer for better security and then send the transaction. So let's look at how we can dip into transactions a little bit deeper and customize them.
So the first thing that I'm going to do is grab the private key of the first account that TestRBC made for us, and I'm going to set that to a variable called pkey1. Then I'm going to require that Ethereum JS TX library that we included in our package JSON, and I'm going to set that to a variable called FTX, uh, Ethereum JS TX. And now that Ethereum JS TX library requires us to pass data structures to it in the format of a JavaScript buffer instead of a string. Why it does this, I'm not really sure, but it's just one of those obnoxious things you need to deal with as, as an Ethereum developer, which is that these JavaScript libraries have really bizarre developer interfaces that are a little wonky to deal with. So I'm going to make a new variable called pkey1x, which is gonna be the buffer encoded data structure. And fortunately, because we're using a Node.js runtime, we should just have access to that buffer class by default. So I'm gonna do new buffer pkey1 comma hex and the p key that should work and you can see how wonky a data format this is but that's the data format we need to interact with the ethereum js tx library now the next thing we need to do is we're going to need to create a raw transaction data structure and then sign it with our private key so the raw transaction data structure is just a javascript object of key value pairs but we're going to need to encode every single integer in that key value pair into hexadecimal just before we sign it. So let's just look at what that looks like. So we're gonna set a variable called raw tx. And the first thing we need to set is the nonce. And remember, we can get access to the nonce using that web3.f.get transaction count method and then pass in account one. And remember, we need to code this into hex, which we can do with web3.2 hex. So that's the data format that you're gonna to need to use for anything that's an integer in, this, uh, in the value of this map. So that's um, the nonce. Then we're going to do the two account, and we're going to send this to account two. We're going to need to set the gas price, which we are going to use what we were using before, which is 20 billion way. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now the gas limit, we're going to need to set also, which we're going to do web 3.2 hex, and we know it's 21,000 gas is all that we're going to need for this transaction. And then we're going to need to set the value that we want to transfer. And let's make it some big number so that we can see the impact of this. We'll do web3.2way25 ether. And then finally, we can encode any uh, string of arbitrary data that we want to serve as metadata for this transaction. So we could encode into hexadecimal just some interesting data, like maybe some documentation about the transaction, something like that. And we're just going to leave this blank for now, though, and then close this data structure out. And if we want to see what it looks like, we can just click raw TX, and we'll see that the nonce is number eight, the gas price and gas limit and the value were encoded into hexadecimal. Our data is blank. Now we're going to need to sign this. So first, we're going to need to create a new transaction object using that FTX library. And we're going to pass in the raw transaction. Next, we're going to need to sign this with our private key. So we're going to do TX.sign PK1X. So we need to use that buffer private key to actually sign it with. And then we can serialize this and see what it looks like. So if I call tx.serialize.toString hex, we can see that we get this serialized hexadecimal representation of the signed transaction. And this is the interesting thing that we're trying to get out of this. So this signed transaction, we can pass around. We can send it to a friend. We could send it to a service. This is secure. This is encoded but this has the transaction data. So if you send this to the Ethereum network, this will actually send a transaction, but you can create this offline and then take this to an online computer and then use it to send a transaction. So the function you use to send a transaction from this is not send transaction, but send raw transaction. So it would be web3.f.send raw transaction. And we're gonna pass in, we actually need to pass this in, but with a zero X in front of it. So let me copy this guy right here. And let me just do 0x and then paste that in. And then we're going to get a function as a callback that will t give us either an error or the data from the network. Um, and we'll just do if there's not an error, then console.log the data that you get back. And that should work. So let's hit enter. And we'll see that we actually do get a TX hash returned from this network. And if we look down in our RPC, we can see that the transaction went through. So let's go ahead now and look at, let's go and inspect this and let's do web3.f.get transaction, get transaction, and then pass this guy in. And we can see that it was nonce eight, just like we encoded the gas, the gas price, the value. And it looks like it did go through and we should be able to check the balance of account one. 
and see that it's significantly lower. So we did actually transact 25 Ether in that transaction. 